Hey, how are you doing? I'm Xin Wang. I work for Intel. Today, I will talk about the cool features of WebAssembly Micro Runtime for IoT and the embedded devices. In this topic, we will talk about why WebAssembly is great for IoT, the one more project history and the status, the features of this project. And uh, then we will do more details about the interpreters, ahead of time compiler and the loader, execution in place, source debugger, application framework, and give a quick start. WebAssembly was created for improving the web application performance. And nowadays, it is viewed as an important technology for much larger scope. The Watson has several great features, which are extremely useful for IoT space. First, the Watson is a compilation target for multi front-end languages, which enables more developers in the IoT programming. The isolation with Watson sandbox and a small footprint is especially useful for those embedded devices high performance, portability, and the standardized embedding API make it possible to create unified application framework over heterogeneous devices. Finally, the SMD and the multi-threading features can work for heavy computing scenarios such as AI and image processing. With these features, it can help IoT systems to overload computing among cloud, edge, Notes in a flexible way, the application development for embedded devices can be independent to those um, base firmware, the innovation can be greatly accelerated. The sandbox can even enable third party application runs on your devices. The Watson is also good for automation applications because of its good time determinism. Let me give a quick introduction about the project background. The WAMA was open sourced by Intel in May 2019. It was originally created for some internal usage, including cloud and embedded. So it was designed targeting small footprint, high performance, and, and great adaptability. WAMA was transferred to Bicode Alliance in November 2019 as one of the initiating projects. And in 2021, the open governance model and the technical steering community was established. WAMA has active community and broad adoptions by commercial products and the open source projects already. The usages cover smart contract, IoT, Service mesh, trusted computing, mini app, etc. To have all the uh, content displayed, so from this page, I um, turned off the uh, camera. And uh, the features of Warmer, uh, Warmer has um, full support for the WebAssembly MVP spec and also provided aggressive support for the post-MVP features. Um, one more supports interpreter, including uh, fast and classic mode, ahead of time compilation and just-in-time compilation. One more is a C-based implementation, and the compilation is based on LLVM. One more has a very small binary size and the memory consumption the VM core only have a 60k kilobytes for LT mode and a 90k for interpreter mode. And to run a simple hello world, it only needs 3k memory. It has a near native performance with LT and the JIT. Also, the faster interpreter provides very good um, performance as well. The ahead of time module loader uh, to um, 
enable the LT for multiple environments and uh, the execution in place can have uh, the um, um, compiled module directly loaded from the flash. Uh, it has um, LT oriented uh, WhatsApp application framework and the API also support remote application management. It supports um, uh, libc wasi, um, libc build in, um, multi thread, multi module, SMD, and the CPI for embedding and the source debugging and the application management. The one already provided good support for different CPU architectures, such as x86, ARM, MIPS, ARC, extension, and the RISC-V. And regarding to the operating system, it has been ported to Linux, Windows, macOS, Android, Zephyr, RDOS things, Vixworks, um, RTSwrite, and Open Authors. Warmer has uh, three built-in blocks, VM Core, Application Manager, and Application Framework. These three blocks are, uh, are uh, separated and uh, self-contained. So <coughs> if you want, you can build your own application framework and the management on top of the VM Core. Um, inside the VM Core, we have uh, several um, uh, components. So uh, from the button, uh, it's a shared library um, uh, used by uh, the VM Core, including the memory allocator, uh, some util uh, library APIs, and uh, the platform porting layer. And uh, then is um, the native lib engine, including uh, native lib invoker, um, native lib manager, thread manager, and uh, the libc supporting uh, with the beauty mode and the wazi mode, and uh, the uh, libc uh, supporting for p -thread. Then we have uh, two engines. Uh, one is uh, the interpreter engine and the, and the JIT uh, LT engine. Um, in the right side is the application uh, framework. We already supported a few APIs uh, such as um, uh, Timer API, the inter application communication, um, uh, pub sub mode, and uh, request response mode, and also uh, sensor API and uh, the API uh, based on little VGL, which provides the um, uh, 2D graphic uh, interface. Uh, the application manager will provide uh, a communication service to a uh, remote, so you can uh, uh, install, uninstall, and uh, query the existing apps through the application manager. The uh, interpreters, the warmer now supports uh, fast interpreter and the classic interpreter. The classic interpreter is a stack based. It has a smaller um, uh, average uh, bytecode and um, it's um, uh, based, based on stack operation. So as well as we have the overhead and the smaller uh, memory usage. And the fast interpreter is a REST file based. It extended the bytecode in memory. So during loading the Watson, it will pre-compile the Watson opcode to the extended bytecode. Um, it will have a larger um, bytecode size, but it provides um, extremely faster execution uh, speed and also consume more memory 
So here is a measurement on core mark ben uh, workload. So the score reported by uh, core mark, uh, the um, fast interpreter is almost is almost three times of the uh, classic interpreter, but um, the um, uh, the the memory consumption uh, wise, uh, the um, the fast interpreter consume more memory than classic uh, interpreter. The fast interpreter will do pre compilation from Watson to extended bytecode. Here is the uh, um, procedure. So in the left side, we can see a few. Um, uh, WebAssembly code. So basically, it will just uh, load the local variables uh, into a, a stack, and uh, the add um, upcode will load the uh, operands from stack and uh, push the result into the stack. Then add with a, um, another constant one, then set the result into uh, variable um, zero. So we uh, compile uh, the uh, to extended uh, bytecode. So we use the different way to uh, store the uh, operands. So it's called slot, and uh, we have a three um, a slot um, uh, category. One is for the uh, const, one is for the local variables, and another one is for the um, dynamic operands. So after calculating the uh, slots for each op uh, operands, so in the new um, extended bytecode, actually the um, slot ID is a um, is following the um, upcode. So uh, the first two are the uh, operand to be operated. The third one is the result. Uh, uh, is, a, is a the uh, slot to store the results. So after the uh, conversion, so we can have a see have a six um, uh, original. Uh, Watson code uh, becomes two um, extended bytecodes. The ahead of time compilation and the loader, the Warmer supports um, LT compiler Warmer C. So you can use uh, Warmer C to compile Watson module to uh, ahead of time module, which is already uh, in uh, uh, native instructions. The Wama module loader enable uh, LT module running in uh, various uh, target environments such as Linux, Windows, um, trust execution environments such as uh, Intel SGX, and even uh, in the uh, MCU microcontrol units. So with uh, the um, uh, ahead of time compilation and we actually have a multiple path for deploying the LT module. Uh, first one, you can um, just uh, distribute the Watson uh, bytecode and do the uh, compilation on the target. So if you are running on Linux or Windows, you can do that. And, or you can uh, use the cloud-based uh, distribution. So you can have a WMSC on the cloud. So before distributed to any a specific target, you can uh, compile it in the cloud, or you can directly uh, do the compilation in your development environment. So you can distribute the LT module together with the software package. The execution in place for LT module, um, uh, or we can call it XIP. XIP supports execution. Uh, of a LT compiled module from Flash, that will reduce the memory usage uh, by loading the module into uh, DRAM. The uh, to use the XIP feature, 
you will use the uh, the, the parameter provided by WMRC when compiling the uh, LT module. So you will use enable indirect mode and disable LVM uh, in intrinsics. So uh, so um, the uh, to support the XIP, actually there are some uh, special design in the warmer. And the major goal is to avoid patching the module for calling functions in the host because uh, normally uh, when you load in uh, LT module, you need to patch the uh, calling uh, 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 places. So in the LT module, we designed a map in the um, module, which uh, is from the function index to the uh, symbol name, and also uh, the call in the module to uh, function hosted in the runtime uh, environment is a through index. And in the runtime, we have a map from the symbol name to a function address. Also, when we load a module, we needed to uh, build a function table in the uh, memory that um, map the function index to the point. Okay, um, so we also provide um, recommendation for the development uh, working flow. So basically, if you want to build a, um, 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 some product with a good IDE, you probably can have um, your own IDE uh, based on either uh, Eclipse or VS Code and uh, with your IDE uh, plugin. And uh, the two chains, including um, the SDK header files, a library, Wasm two chain, and uh, the Warmer LT compiler. Those uh, sometimes you want to pack it in a Docker image. Then on the development environment, you can have a simulator. So when you are build, um, finish the coding, you can directly load it the build Watson into simulator. The simulator will have all the API supported. So even those API are totally different implemented with the target environment, but the the, um, the um, simulation uh, can be no problem. So when you finish the development, uh, building and the simulating, you can load the Watson binary into a target environment. So in the target environment, you can uh, see the API library is supported, and then it has a runtime and a loader. Here is a demo for showing the source debugging of WebAssembly applications. We already have a, a VS Code um, opened here. And if you see source code are already uh, written in the VS Code, let's start. The source code. Go to the extension view. Configuration dialog for setting the parameters. And then here we can see we have a, a Docker image installed locally. All the building two chains are installed in the Docker image. Click the build to start the building process. When it is finished, we can see the generated Watson file and LT file here. Then go to the um, extension view, uh, start the de debugging. So we can see uh, breakpoints uh, run. Go to the another breakpoint. We can also see the uh, value uh, variables and the values in the debugger 
view. Yeah, that's it. The warmer VM core provides APIs for building a customized application framework. Um, normally, this API, including help the native world course the Watson functions, also um, help the Watson world course the native APIs. So in the right side diagram, so these two interfaces provide the intercommunication between two words. And um, the warmer already provided uh, a synchronized application programming model, which um, is very uh, useful for the IoT devices. In this model, it can support uh, multi-applications and uh, intercommunicated through the uh, queue and the messaging. Every Watson application has its own sandbox and the thread. So uh, they uh, have a running in a loop and the posting message to others. The every uh, application have a, a system defined callback on init and on destroy. Those are executed by the uh, application framework. And uh, it also supports the remote application management. So you can install, start, and uninstall the applications uh, from remote. Here is the Strange API and, uh, and uh, a sample. Um, let's have a, a look into the sample first. Um, so, um, on, uh, in the function on init, uh, we define a sensor object, and uh, the sensor object is initiated with a calling sensor open, with the parameters, the name of the sensor. The uh, some uh, parameter and also the sensor event handler, and then we will configure the sensor uh, frequency uh, of the uh, sampling and others. So when the sensor event arrives, the sensor um, event handler callback will be triggered, and uh, you can get all the sensor data from the uh, parameters of this function. And uh, when this um, application is uninstalled, the unDestroy will be excluded by the framework. So in the right, right side, so this is the um, uh, internal architecture. So basically we have a two words working together, the Watson word and the native word. So, a number of functions will be called when the um, board is initialized, like in, in, initialize the sensor framework, they add the uh, physical sensors uh, one by one. So, um, so um, that will create some sensor node in the memory, 
and uh, when some application uh, in Watson try to open a sensor, it will eventually call the uh, native API Watson sensor open. That will create a, a client node linked into the sensor. Then there is a thread uh, repeatedly um, um, uh, sample sample the sensor and the post the event to each client attached to this sensor. So the event will be um, uh, turned um, to calling the on sensor event was a function inside the uh, library. Uh, then the library will find the uh, caller and uh, call the uh, event callback. Let's look at another uh, sample here, um, which uh, demonstrate the inter uh, app communication in a pub sub uh, model. Um, <coughs> even it can support the uh, WebAssembly communicate with the remote devices. Uh, Never site is uh, the source code for the uh, subscriber. Uh, simply, it just uh, call the API subscribe event in the uh, init. The first parameter is a topic of the event alert over hitch, and the second parameter is the callback for the uh, event handling. In the right side is the source code for the publisher application. So it uh, just uh, create a repeat a repeatedly timer in the on init. So every second, the timer one update function will be triggered, and in the um, function it just um, um, post the event on alert overhead with a calling API um, publish event. Some IoT devices may have touch screen designed. You can program Watson apps to provide graphic user interface. The Warmer provided two samples with a little video, which is a 2D graphic user interface library. In the right side, the above one is the Watson app runs on Linux with a simple direct media layer. The one below is the same Watson binary, runs on the STM32 board with a physical touch LCD. The two samples demonstrated, you can either build the little video 2D library into the host software or build it into the Watson bytecode <coughs> as part of the application. Now let's have a quick start on Warmer. Uh, there are a few steps. First one to set up the building environment. So you can follow the command below to get all the building tools environment available. Then download Warmer repository from the GitHub. Then start to build the uh, mini product for runtime and also run the Watson module on that. Uh, build the uh, mini product at Watson, you can follow the command here, and it will generate a binary file at Watson. And uh, then follow the command here to build the uh, Watson module from source code. Then use the at Watson to load the uh, uh, generated Watson module and then uh, run it. Uh, in the picture in the right side, so we can see the output from the uh, Watson module. The hello world, hello world uh, is printed and also print the Watson micro runtime. To use the AOT compiler, 
um, first uh, you will need to download and build LLVM then build the Warmer LT compiler Warmer C so when Warmer C is available you can use the Warmer C to compile the Russell module into LT module then you can just use the um, iWASM um, generate in previous page to run the um, LT uh, module here. Okay, um, if you <coughs> have uh, some interest to try the uh, warmer, um, here we show some basic usage how to load a Watson binary and call into the Watson function from your uh, host software. In the right side, so basically, uh, basically you will first initialize the Watson runtime by calling Watson runtime init, then load the uh, Watson binary into memory, um, then you probably will <coughs> register some native APIs, so uh, those APIs can be called by the Watson uh, applications. Then you load the buffer uh, into a module. Then you will call the Watson runtime instantiate to create an instance of this module. Now the, you are able to um, call the function inside the Watson applications. First, you need to find out the, um, the handle to this function by the symbol name, uh, which is a, a fib here. So um, then you can create an execution environment by defining some uh, like a stack size. Um, then you will call the Watson runtime call Watson into the target function. So parameter will be the uh, execution environment and uh, the function handle and the parameters you want to pass into the Watson function, which is in uh, array. If uh, the function failed, you will be able to get the failure from um, calling Watson runtime get exception. In the other direction, we may need to call native functions from the Watson module. It is very easy in Warmer. In the runtime, you just register a number of native functions by calling Watson runtime register natives. Each element in the array for registration contains the function symbol name, the native function address, and the function signature. The Warmer has extended the signature a bit to make the process much simpler. On the right side, the signature letter star means the parameter is a pointer in the uh, Watson module, so the runtime will do the address space conversion. The letter tilde must follow the star means the length of the buffer pointed so the runtime can do the boundary check. The letter dollar means the parameter is a string in the Watson world. There are more uh, re uh, useful reference links uh, uh, listed here, such as build the source code in Watson binary, embed Warmer, the Warmer head files, build Warmer, export native API to Watson, and the basic sample. It is all for the topic WebAssembly Micro Runtime. I would recommend you to download Warmer and try it out. If you have uh, any problem, you can post the issue in the GitHub. I'm sure your issue will be answered very quickly. Thank you. Bye.